When all the world has gone to sleep The fairies from the forest creep From out the wildwood comes the call The dance is life, the dance is all An ancient forest beckons me to run sky-clad amongst the trees This band of pagans cannot wait with you tonight to celebrate Kernunos, Lord of Beasts, has spoke Come join us for some pagan folk to the evil clown of the house of Macdonald. Macbeth! Act 4, scene 1. A cave. Three witches are gathered around a fire. Thrice the brinded cat hath mewed. Thrice and once the hedge pig whined. Harpy cries, tis time, tis time. The 
around a band of cold and go. King of toys and then just throw. Skin of toad and spike of bow. Jumping on an eagle, stone serpent, egg and dancing dead. Effigy of beat and then double, double trouble. You bubble in a witch's room. Of a fanny snake, I have looped and toe a frog. There's a leg and fairy ring round the back that calls and sing double, double trouble. You bubble in a witch's room. It will be done when the hurly birdies done Double, double trouble, you bubble in a witch's room Parker, who's always with us on every gig, and Joe's gonna start it off for you with a beautiful slow air traditional called Were You at the Rock?
I read this poem dearly, I could hear the tune so clearly, emanating from these timeless words of Edgar Allan Poe. Here a song lay, dreaming, dozing, through the centuries reposing, waiting for our deft composing to awaken it and show that these dark, majestic, deeply moving, ominous words of Poe are a song you need to know. Never more! The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as if someone gently rapping, tapping at my chamber door. To some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, merely this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in a bleak December And each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow From my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore Nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. Presently, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Merely this and nothing more. Peering long, I stood there wandering, fearing Doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token And the only word there spoken was the whispered word Lenore This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word Lenore Merely this, and nothing more into the chamber turning all my soul within me burning soon again i heard a tapping somewhat louder than before surely said i surely that is someone at my window lattice let me see then what they're at is and this mystery explore let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore tis the wind and nothing more Open wide I flung the shutter When with many a flirt and flutter In there stepped a stately raven Of the saintly days of yore Not the least obeisance made he Not a minute stopped or stayed But with mien of lord or lady Perched upon my chamber door Perched upon a bust of Eris just above my chamber door Perched and sat And nothing more By the grave and stern decorum of the countenance at war 
Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven. Ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, wandering on the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on this night's plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Now the raven, sitting lonely on that placid bust, spoke over. That one word is of his soul, in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have gone before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before, quoth the raven, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed by an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Once more on the velvet sinking, I betook myself to Lincoln, fancy on to fancy thinking, what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking. Tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet said, I think of evil, prophet still a bird or devil. By that heaven stretched above us, by that God we both adore. Tell this soul this sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp her air and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that bird a sign in parting, bird or fiend a shriek of starting. Get thee back into the tempest, on the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token, of that lie thy soul has spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore.
This next song expresses how we feel about nature, about life. And when we play this on stage, that's when we feel really, really alive! <laughs>
well known that we play pagan folk music, that we play music from the north of Europe, of the tradition. But sometimes it's cool just to try and grab something from outside of Europe, something from a different culture. Diljaya is such a piece, it's from Afghanistan, and we play it just to show that true music surpasses all politics and religion.
this song we play to awaken the nature-loving Celtic spirit that lives inside all of you. Let virtue distinguish the brave, place riches in lowest degree. Think them poorest who can be a slave, think them richest who dare to be free. Parece Joe! 
And that's Mitch. And here we have Luca. And this is Jenny. And I'm Steve. working on the tune for this next song. Uh, we were here practicing it in the living room with Joe and Jenny. And we were was listening to it and we were thinking that this melody needs some sort of lyrics. And we couldn't think of anything straight at that moment. But that morning I'd been reading a book of Lewis Carroll through the looking glass. And in there there's a poem and suddenly it just popped into my head. I rushed upstairs, grabbed the book, ran back down again while they were still playing this melody. And I started reciting these words over the music and it just fitted together perfectly. And that's how Fairy Tale was born. Yeah. 
This song is a bit of prime big and folk of the purest nature spirit. This is actually how I imagine a satyr would play a double flute. Saltatio! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 